All right, um, this first section here today we're gonna do is titled The Decline of Union Influence. And, and the truth is, I feel like I've been talking about this for quite some time in my lectures when we discussed unions, which was, I think, our last section. Um, so a lot of this might be repetitive, but yes, um, in the last 50 years, we've seen a large decline in union membership. Um, we know, and here's a graph. If you look um, in the night starting, in, in the 1930s, we see a huge rise in union membership in, in the 19, um, oh, this is actually no wrong chart. Um, well, there was a huge rise in union membership in the 30s, in the 1950s and 60s, union membership was at its heights, close to 40% of all jobs being union jobs. And then we see a decline um, in that to the point where today, I believe that number is about 11%. Um, why? And this is where we might get a little different than our past lectures, other than just stating the, the facts there. Um, and one of the things is that um, there's been a decline in manufacturing jobs. This is manufacturing jobs in the US during World War II. There were a lot of jobs in manufacturing. Um, it got to its height around 1980, and we started to see a decline um, really around the year 2000. Um, now, over the last 20 years, there's been a slight uptick, but this has a, been a really big drop in the amount of, uni, of manufacturing jobs. And manufacturing jobs, factory jobs, have oftentimes been union jobs. So as we've seen a decline in manufacturing jobs, it is very similar to the decline in union jobs. Not, not exactly, it kind of took 20 years before the, the factories um, manufacturing went down. A lot of this was jobs going overseas um, in the 2000s. In the late 90s and 2000s, there was a move for companies to start locating their manufacturing in other countries where they could pay workers less. Um, at first it was China and then it became modern day. We talk about you know Vietnam or Indonesia because the people in China are getting paid more than they used to get paid in the, in the 90s and 2000s. Um, but that's a that's a factor in this. Is it the only factor? No. Um, another reason may be that companies don't want their employees to be unionized. Um, ask Bezos, where in um, Georgia, I believe, there was a, a an attempt for Amazon workers to unionize. Union workers get paid more. They, on average, they get better benefits, which the employer has to pay. Um, and he waged a campaign within his company to try and get people to vote no on unionization, which worked. Um, but it is true that this is something that's gonna cost the employer more if their members, if their employees are, are members of unions. <clears throat> um, and also we know that many Americans are working part-time jobs. We have the gig economy. I mean, none of this it, it works well with unions. Um, Union jobs are usually full-time, 40 hours a week jobs, oftentimes factory jobs. We know today that the majority of union jobs are public sector unions. They're teachers. The biggest unions in America are teachers, police, firefighters, um, trash men, city workers, all are part of a union. Um, and there's also been a, a push. There's been a kind of backlash. A lot of people will say stuff like unions are slower. Unions get less stuff done. I mean, not teachers. Teachers work really hard. But um, in terms of like construction, like city workers, um, why are there three city workers here to cut down the tree that, you know, I could hire one person to do? I, I had a situation like that at one point where um, there was a tree that had, had kind of messed up the electrical wires that was going into my house. And I called up the DWP and that's a union job. These are the union city workers. And then two guys showed up and they took an hour to cut down like two branches. Um, why did they do that? Well, look, safety, right? One guy holds a ladder, the next guy climbs up the tree. They make sure they do it right. They cleaned up after they were done. Um, they did a nice job where Later on, that tree would also be cut down by an individual who was hired by the neighbor, it was the neighbor's tree. And um, one guy climbed up there kind of dangerously and, and, it's, and cut it down. And when it fell down, he just left the mess all over the place. So oftentimes union work is higher quality, right? But then remember you're paying more because you got two guys who took an hour and this guy probably took a half hour. He went up there with a saw and hacked it down. So, 
quality of work, all of these things that get kind of blended in together. Um, and the question you have to ask is, you know, if you were the business owner, would you want to pay more or pay less? Pay less. Unless the quality was so bad that people stopped buying your product, in which case you want to pay more. <laughs> um, so it's, it's complicated as so much of economics is. I mean, I hope that at this point, you guys are starting to see that these aren't, you know, black and white decisions, that they're all in the gray somewhere. I'm not quite sure where they belong in the gray and that that's for you to decide on your own, but um, these are complex decisions that, that can't be answered with one words, with one word answers. It's not usually not, as, as, as is life, right? So rarely are you just kind of like, yes, no. It's, do you like this? Yes, no. Um, the answer is maybe sometimes, or in this case, or 